One of the first steps when studying acids and bases is, unfortunately, to memorize which of the species are strong acids and which are strong bases. A strong acid is an acid that is completely dissociated. So, in this, I'm giving you here, giving here, giving you here the list. In water, hydrochloric acid will be completely dissociated into dihydronium ion and chloride. It's there's no equilibrium or barely any. If you have zero one molar of this guy, it means that you'll rather this will go to zero. You'll have zero one of this and zero one of this. Okay. Um, we can give you another example. So sulfuric acid in water completely dissociated. So you know, notice that we need two waters because this is going to release two protons. Therefore, okay, completely dissociated to the right. It's important that you memorize these because any acid that is not in this list will be therefore a weak acid. That means it will be in equilibrium and we cannot determine, like what we did here, we cannot determine the concentrations in equilibrium. Likewise for the bases. The strong bases are all like if you remember the shape of the periodic table, it's hydroxides from either this group or this group. Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, rubidium hydroxide, or magnesium, calcium. Oh, magnesium is twice here. It should be barium. Barium hydroxide or strontium hydroxide. Okay. In solution, you do not have an equilibrium. It's completely dissociated to the right. Okay. That's the reaction in water. Now, what happens when a strong acid meets a strong base? Okay, what happens? What happens is what we call a neutralization reaction. In this case, for example, if you have HCl and NaOH, there is a complete displacement of proton from HCl to NaOH, so what you will have is the salt sodium chloride and just water. Okay? So the take home message is that when an acid, strong acid, meets a strong base, you have the salt and water. So that means a completely neutral reaction. We will talk more about that. Let me give you another example. When sulfuric, because it has two protons, it may be good to, to show you what it looks like. Um, magnesium hydroxide well, two protons, but there's already two acceptors. That means you'll have two waters. Count the atoms. It should be balanced. And you'll have magnesium and sulfate. Okay. It is important that you remember the charge because there is two hydrogens in here. In other words, please memorize this list. It's very important that you can identify what strong acids and strong bases are. Notice that hydrogen fluoride, it is not a strong acid, it's a weak acid. Okay? So let's see if we can understand, in this case it's ranking, if we can understand this with solving a problem, we have to rank in decreasing order the concentrations of ions in aqueous solution. When you have a sulfuric acid, what you have is a complete displacement to the right of the hydronium ion and notice that you'll have you'll need two and sulfate. Okay? So the concentrations in equilibrium will be that whatever the concentration of sulfate of sulfuric acid, now you have twice as much so concentration of three O plus. Okay? So if this was say one molar, now you have two molar and one molar. Okay. Now, let's a little bit more of a complicated case. This one is not in the list, so you have sodium hydrogen sulfite. First you have just an this, okay? And some of this, some of the hydrogen sulfate because oops, sorry because it's not a strong acid, it means it'll be just a little bit dissociated. Just a little bit. Okay? So this means that the concentration of sodium 
will be larger than the concentration of sulfite and these will definitely m be much larger than the concentration of this one which will be equal to oh, I'm running out of oh, oh. sorry okay no it keeps okay there um, now let's see for this one I'm gonna write it here for what are the concentrations of ions in solution when you have a solution of magnesium hydroxide well this is a strong base so this means that I have okay so if I had one molar of this I have one molar of magnesium in solution and two molar of hydroxide okay so in other words you have twice you need to double the magnesium of concentration to be equal to the concentration okay and finally this one again it's a very similar there should be a two in here it's a very similar situation as as this case up here as sodium hydrogen sulfite because this is a, an ionic compound and you'll have will be completely dissociated okay so if you had one molar of this now you have one molar of magnesium and you would say well I have one molar of hydrogen carbonate however hydrogen carbonate is a weak acid therefore some of this one molar will be dissociated into carbonate and hydrogen so the take home message is that the magnesium will still be one molar that does not change and a little bit of this bicarbonate or hydrogen carbonate will be dissociated therefore this one molar some of it may be gone away say that 90% is kept as such so that means you have 0.09 and it's distributed as 0.01 in here that, that would mean only 10% of the hydrogen carbonate has turned into carbonate therefore you still have a little bit so one molar is smaller than 0.09 and that's still smaller than the concentration of carbonate which is equal to the concentration of hydrogen hopefully that makes some sense we'll keep practicing but it's important that one you can identify the list of the strong acids that are fully dissociated wherever is not a strong acid it means that will be partially dissociated um, and therefore they will not behave so, like a strong acid.